What is going on friends and welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we're taking another look at the mega base progress on Hermitcraft Season 8 and so much has been done since the last time we checked in on these guys. They have been working their butts off to get everything done on this server and so far everything is looking absolutely amazing. If you enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like on it and if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well and go ahead and check out the rest of our content. Let's jump right into today's video. Starting off today, we are looking at Cubfan who has been working on his dripstone canyons and actually completely terraforming the surrounding area, adding red sand, copper, cactus, and so much more little details to this whole area. I think it's actually starting to look really incredible. I already enjoyed the canyons, I thought it was a great idea to have all the dripstone, but now that he's added all this around the sides, it's looking really, really cool. Definitely a very cool terraforming project and I love the little trees that he's built with the dead coral. And he's also completely expanding how far the canyons are going as well, moving them way, way out. I'm still really excited to see how he works with Pearl uh, and combines his base with her mountain. It already kind of is with the terraforming up to the mountain, but I really want to see exactly how they combine later on if they end up doing it. Next up, we're taking a quick look at Doc M and Rindog, who have been working a lot this season on farms. They, of course, started off with the Octo Chunk and the Chicken Farm. They soon moved on to a shulker box farm. They have obsidian farm, snow farm, they have copper farms. They have so much going on on this server so far. I really don't understand a lot of the farms that they have. This one specifically, he has two withers that is shooting into an open air nether portal and the player cycles through and spawns the uh, obsidian. Uh, and it's kind of a complicated process, but he explains it all in his videos if you want more of all these technical farms that he's doing on the Hermitcraft server, definitely go check out his channel. Now back to things I understand a little bit better. False Symmetry's Megabase. She has built a very amazing Megabase so far. She's currently working on a flying eagle that is holding up a sky island, which I think is a very cool idea. I've of course seen plenty of sky islands before. I think they always look amazing, but this one in particular is really cool how the eagle is holding it and how it's also losing blocks behind. You can see that she wanted to give it an aspect of motion and I think it looks incredible. She's also building a shop inside this floating island, which I think is a great idea. And she went and looked over at Gemini Tay's base and noticed all the buildings and how it looks like a small village. And so she said she wanted to maybe do that with her area as well. And she started that off in her most recent video by building a well in her area. I'm very excited to see what else False decides to build in this area, but so far it is all looking amazing. Next up, we are looking at Gemini Tay, who of course has this woodland palace. And so far, I am absolutely loving it, especially all the colors that she's using, uh, the green and tan. I think everything pairs very nicely together. And she's even recently been adding some extra uh, shapes on the outside to give the build a better definition and uh, a lot more depth. This is one of the projects that I'm really excited to see finish because it is looking so incredible so far and I bet it's going to look amazing as a final product later on this season. She is working on Empire's SMP as well though, so she does have to split her time between the two servers. Next up today we are looking at Grian, who is basing his mega base off of the Harry Potter Diagon Alley, and he's put in a lot of work putting all the buildings into this area. He also wants to fill each building with a different type of farm. He started off with a creeper farm in one of his buildings, but he plans to put in a lot of different farms. And it would probably all go much smoother if he didn't keep dying and losing all of his things. But what can you really expect when you're having fun with Scar? Next up, iJevin has gotten his soon-to-be slime pit all the way down to bedrock and filled the bottom end with glass. And as you can see, the walls are still unfinished uh, in his latest video, but he's actually been doing some work on stream and he posted on Twitter that he's covering the whole wall with stone brick and adding stairs and things like that to give it a lot of detail and variance. He has also turned to the dark side and joined up with Suma, becoming Evil Eye Jevin, and he has built things over at Suma's base as well, his own shop. But all that fun won't take away from all the work that he's doing in this hole, and I really can't wait to see this as a finished product. Next up, we are checking at Impulse, who I believe has done the most work on his mega base so far this season. He, of course, has a lot of work to do on the interior and adding details still, and he probably has some things that he wants to do on the outside as well but he has added a lot of details and things like that so far. You can see here he has some completely new buildings, new towers, and it is all looking incredible. 
I can't even imagine how long it took just to gather the materials for this build, let alone build it all in such a short span of time. He has definitely been putting a ton of work into this Hermitcraft season so far, and I really can't wait to see what he does to combine into the Gigabase. His factory paired with all the terraforming that the other hermits are doing is going to be very interesting. Next up, Iskal and Etho have been working a lot on their area. They've been building cranes, buildings, things like that and making the whole thing look very cool. I actually really like this whole design and how their base spreads out over the entire Shattered Mountain here. And Iskal still isn't using wings, so he has to get around this whole area with a trident, and I have a lot of respect for that because it's definitely much harder to do, but I can see the joy of not using an elytra for quite a while. Next up, Corallus and Pearlescent Moon have been doing a lot of work that I'm not completely sure was necessary. And as we know, Pearl likes to move bases, and so they took down their entire castle that they built early in this season and rebuilt it somewhere else. If someone were to ask me how to define Hermitcraft, this is something that I would describe to them. These are people who, if they build something in the wrong place, even though it is huge and looks beautiful, they will completely move the entire thing, and I think that is not only hilarious, but really cool as well. They of course built the castle back and it looks amazing. They did all the trees, all the builds, everything, completely terraformed this whole area of land to fit the area. Not only that, but Kralis has also been doing some work in the Big Eyes shopping district and he has built a little Italian house, which I think looks really cool. I really love this Italian style and all the blocks and everything used in it are very interesting. Next up, I have no clue what to call him, whether it's Mumbo Jumbo, Batman, Potato Boy, or what else. He has been doing a ton of work on his mega base, and as you can see here, he has a hidden waterfall base now. And I think this is extremely cool. The redstone that he put into that and uh, in the video where he showed how to build it was very interesting. It all pushes out and blocks the water from coming down and then opens up, but the way it all goes about it to prevent the water from messing up is super cool to see. Apart from the door though, he has also been doing work on the actual interior of the base, and I don't know if I can call it an interior before he's built the back of it yet, but we'll stick with that for now. After doing some deals with Tango Tech and getting a ton of iron in return for sponsorship, some signs, uh, I'm not really sure if Tango got a good deal there, but either way the deal is done and Mumbo now has his entire storage system, or at least part of it. He's still planning on putting his mass storage system on the other side of the base, and he also plans to add a constellation or galaxy type thing on the top of his base. A lot of plans for this base and I'm really excited to see how it all turns out and I'm especially excited to see how he actually combines it with Scar's impulses and Green's base later on. Definitely going to be a very interesting design and I really can't wait for them to come up with that plan. Next up, a quick look at Suma, who has been doing a lot of work in this whole area. iJevin also built the base right across from him, as you can see there, but he's been doing all the pathways and things like that in his whole evil area. Derpcoin is becoming bigger and bigger on the server. Whether or not that's because people are buying things or he's giving it out, I'm not really too sure yet, but he is making profit, so hopefully we see some really cool things happen with that later on as well. Suma has definitely been one of the most entertaining people on the Hermitcraft this season, so definitely go check him out. Next up we are looking at Vintage Beef who is working on a UFO, and he recently actually put some landing gear on it, so now it'll officially be able to land. Whether or not he's going to move it down a few blocks, I really doubt, but the whole area is looking very cool. He's of course got this UFO built out of all the Deep Slate variants and some details with copper, things like that around. And then as you can see underneath, he's actually dug out this whole area, terraformed it to make it look like uh, the UFO crashed there and burnt up the whole area of land. Definitely a very interesting build so far, but I also enjoy that all of his stuff is still sitting outside of this UFO and is not anywhere. He has his complete enchantment room and a lot of chests all just sitting outside. And as you can see here, it's kind of entertaining considering that he has this entire UFO already. Next up, Wells Knight has been doing a ton of work on his floating island, and he pretty much has the whole thing finished now. He's of course going to be putting things on top, but the island itself is basically done. After purchasing some sea lanterns from Iskal, he was able to completely finish up all the lighting of the rings that go around the floating island, and he opened up the side of the island where the actual entrance will be. This build is 
turning out to be extremely huge and I really can't wait to see what he does on top and inside of this floating island. Next up we are looking at XB Crafted whose domes are spreading and he's got three more areas now where smaller domes are going to go. Definitely going to be very interesting to see what he does in each of them. In his most recent video where he actually built up one of the domes, he put a whole farm into it. I love this idea of having biodomes with different things built inside of them to support life and in this case it'll be different farms and things like that in these domes, probably a storage system. But overall, it is looking very cool so far, and I'm loving watching him build these domes. Next up, we are looking at one of the newest members of the Yes Wings Club, and that is Zadaf, who has been doing some work on his laboratory, and he can now finally see it from an aerial view. As we know, Zadaf has been doing experimentation this whole season on not only other hermits, but also game mechanics, and this whole laboratory is where he does it all, uh, built with blue stained glass and also white concrete. The mountain that it rests upon also is completely covered with cauldrons that are collecting powdered snow. I think this is a really cool idea, but also takes a ton of iron. Last but definitely not least, back in the Bodum Village, Scar is still kind of deciding where he's going to build his megabase. He has a few different options that Pearlescent Moon, Grian, and Impulse have all built. Uh, signs for him to build there, but I think Grian is actually one now because he saved Scar from the Bodum Hole and then promptly killed him. Whether or not he actually builds there is yet to be seen. He is still deciding how he wants to do his mega base, and it'll be very interesting when he does. For now though, he is working on a garage for the Swaggin' Wagon. This build actually turned out incredible and is definitely a great addition to the Botum Town. The details of this build are incredible and I really wonder about Scar's building process because watching these time lapses, it seems like he never really messes up and he always likes what he puts down. And since it turns out so great, I'm really curious how much testing he does in creative, or if he does any at all, or if he's just a crazy good builder like we think he is. Definitely some major respect for his builds because they are all incredible. And that is all that we have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button as well and check out the rest of our content. And just a quick note, right as I finished editing this video, Mumbo actually posted a new video where he finished up his storage system and also showed some designs for the constellations he's going to do. Alright, that is all, and I'll see you next time.